at Hamish Orville, Clayton Station. Um, we're at the head of the Fairley Basin, um, 4,100 hectares, 1,100 hectares of flat uh, and rolling and 3,000 hectares of hill. Um, generally running sheep, beef, uh, deer with some cash crop and now some dairy grazing. It's a family farm, father or grandfather bought the place in 1964. Um, it was pretty, uh, I guess, run down. It had no fertiliser history, so it's gone through a huge development phase over the last 50 odd years. I took over management 11 years ago when my father had an accident. All the tree lanes out on this side of the road, uh, the majority of them were planted probably early 80s, which is 54, 54k of tree lanes that were planted by my mother on the place. There was only about 1.2k of uh, shelter belts uh, when my parents bought the place. Um, Self-feed silage pits are a brilliant thing. We used to have to spend the fair chunk of uh, the end of the winter feeding deer with tractors, uh, like you know a lot of people. Um, and this here's stopped all that. We're down here uh, every day, maybe two every two days, moving this by hand. Um, and we've got a lot less wastage with this way rather than a bun which we were losing too much on the outsides uh, and if you got it too steep on the outsides to try and get it square you still got wastage because you couldn't roll it properly um, and I guess also with this the bonus is we can stack all the tyres on top of the uh, containers uh, that it's easier to put them back on the following year and this, this will be for hinds the last 70 days or the right at the tail of the winter um, we try and get all the hinds off the hill be it there's one lot on swedes and kale and or fodder beet and one lot on here the terminal hinds will be in here that allows the hill uh, 70 days to recover into that first part of spring so there's no deer on it the sheep and cattle will go through that country and tidy up any tag and then It'll be shut up so the clover can get re-established um, in that first part of the spring. This is the start of our uh, nutrient catch area. It's about oh, a hectare and a half. Um, the river or the creek comes in and the end is all the way through this area and then back into the main river. Um, we've started in the last year and a half um, testing water as it comes into Clayton as it comes into the deer farm and as it leaves the deer farm um, to get a gauge or set a base level for where we actually sit E. coli, nitrogen, phosphorus um, our major issue on Clayton we've found is E. coli uh, and not necessarily from the deer the levels at the moment uh, rise or they rise as they come into the deer farm. Um, so the, the main area that we've got concern about is stock water creeks. Um, we've actually, through the drought, uh, had to put in a couple of new water schemes, which has actually allowed us to get rid of those stock water creeks. So it's gonna be interesting to see whether that eliminates some of our E. coli issue. Uh, and we're constantly monitoring that just to see where we are. Um, it's about finding that balance uh, between production and looking after our environment. All the hill blocks have at least one if not three areas, riparian areas, that all the water has got to go through before it gets to the nutrient catch area um, to just assist with some of that nutrient loss and sediment loss. Um, these are the areas that we did have planted out but uh, most of the trees the uh, poplars that we planted in here got frosted we believe or the drought got hold of them and they uh, will be planted again but we might put pick on smaller areas. We have uh, out on the hill on some dark faces we do have some mountain flax I think it is and a few cabbage trees using some of the, the natives from our area and bringing some of that seed source down into, into the swamp area and, and bring it into the farm um, because it's probably the, the plants that are going to survive. Um, but as you can see, there is a lot of creeks. This was an ex-swamp, and it's been drained 
30 years ago. So it's, it is very difficult to try and fence all the creeks, but we've got to do something and doing nothing is not acceptable. One of the things that I think is quite crucial to, uh, to this property, but also to, to any property, is, uh, is staff and you know Clayton wouldn't be what it is now um, if it wasn't for previous staff that have put a lot of effort into planting trees, fence lines. I like the boys to have a huge input into the way the property looks and because then they're part of it. Um, we all are part of the planting of trees and all that sort of thing so then they can come back in the future and actually look at what they did when they were here and they put their mark on it and I guess with staff also comes uh, health and safety. We've got a health and safety plan for the property and uh, implement I think reasonably well. It is something with staff you've got to be very mindful of. Accidents you know, do happen and it's about reporting them and, and making sure that we're doing the utmost to mitigate some of those hazardous things. We have these toolbox meetings where all the staff are involved. We talk about any hazards uh, on the property but also training, so they're, they're part of that whole planning process.